Good evening, everyone. How are you guys? It's Thursday night. You guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook page with Brushed by Brandy. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy. Um, please go follow me if you don't already. I am on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Um, I just uploaded a whole bunch of new videos last night to my YouTube channel. So if you guys don't already, Go subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get a notification every time I upload new videos to there. Um, it's youtube.com slash brushed by Brandy. So my name is Brandy. I am a Dixieville Paint Brand Ambassador and I come here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern and I paint with you guys. I see Leah was on late. I don't know if she's on still. I hope I'm not interrupting Leah. Otherwise, I'd be sitting watching her. Um... So we're going to talk about a few things tonight. I'm working on this piece tonight, which you can see um, has an existing paint finish on it. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the process I would go through to paint over an existing finish. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about prep um, and scuff sanding and strippers and things like that. You guys, my husband Sean is here to answer any questions if you guys have any. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. I first want to dedicate this episode to my very last container of Jasco Stripper. So if we could just take a moment of silence. Well, it looks like you really love that one. <laughs> yeah. No, you guys, if um, if you guys follow me at all, you know that I like to use harsh chemical strippers. Um, I strip chemically and then I will sand minimally after that. Um, I like to use the harsh stuff and Jasco is good stuff, but the EPA came out and changed the formula of, of all strippers. There's, it's an EPA, it's a federal regulation, so there's no way around it. If you go to the hardware store, all your strippers have changed their formulas. Um, what? And this was my last container of the really, really good stuff. So now oh, I'm with you guys oh, oh. on having to use the new formula. And the only difference it says on here, so this is, this is the old and the new container, is it says non-methylene chloride formula. So it says water's better? Yeah, it says, <laughs> says water. <laughs> it says water now. I honestly haven't used it yet, but I'm guessing it's significantly less effective, and that's why it had methylene chloride in it to begin with. It works better if you throw the piece off the back of the truck. Um, so... So I'm going to start using this now because I have to. That This can was so dented because I took every can of clearance stripper I could off the shelf, including the ones that were dented. Even the drop tested yeah, ones? Yeah, I got this for 7 bucks a gallon though, and these are 40 bucks a gallon. So oh. who's laughing now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this dented wow. can looks pretty good, huh? Um, so that's the difference. When you guys go to the store, you'll see now that the harsh chemical strippers have been reformulated. They say non-methylene chloride formula. Blah, blah, blah. I'm totally out. Yeah. I'm totally out. Um, the methylene chloride is what gave the stripper its harsh chemical smell. I'm still guessing you don't want to inhale it, um, but but it should be less noxious now. Anyway, moment of silence for my last can of stripper. So, a customer brought me this piece, and it's a really, really pretty piece of furniture. Um, but she had had it painted before. And she wasn't happy with the finish. And I could tell why. It wasn't like it was a poorly done finish. It just had a really gritty texture to it. It almost felt like sandpaper. If you guys have ever rubbed on the, you know, the fine Dixie Belle sanding sponge, that's what this felt like. It had that gritty texture to it. Um, and so I'm going to show you guys what I've done to get this ready for painting with you tonight. We are going to paint it tonight, by the way. So when it came to me with this existing finish on it. So the first thing you want to know is what type of finish does your furniture piece have on it? So this is the best way to tell. Spray your piece with a little bit of water. Can you guys see what that water did? I don't think we can. You don't think you can see it? No. Probably, you know what, honestly, if you hit it on the front, not the side. I don't know where it was, where the piece was. Scoot the piece back. Oh, it's just there we go, the sheeting effect. Okay, can you guys see now what that water we're did? we're talking. The water is beating up. So any, can any of you guys tell me what that means is on here? It's got a waxed finish on it. So that's the best way to tell what type of finish is on your piece. Now you can paint over fully cured wax. Um, I know this is fully cured because my customer told me how long ago she'd have the piece um, finished. So this is fully cured wax. So 
The first thing that I did to this piece is I gave it a scuff sanding. The reason I gave it a scuff sanding is um, number one, to knock down this, it's a really gritty texture. It doesn't feel smooth and finished and refined at all. And that was her number one complaint about it. So a scuff sand, I usually just take my, um, this is my random orbital sander. It's nothing special. I have a surf prep coming, guys. I'm super excited, like a kid on Christmas. But for right now, I have my DeWalt sander. And oh, Leah says hi, so I guess that means she's done. Oh, hi, Leah. Yeah, yeah you're done. Are you done painting? I don't want to bother you or anything. Um, no, I know how it is. You get into the zone and, like, you're in the zone. You don't, don't come out when you're in the zone. So I'm going to take, and this is a 120 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to go over this. <laughs> I can tell that this is a million times better than it was before. So what that says to me is you guys always sand in between your coats of paint. My guess is, is this just wasn't sanded um, in between coats and it left that gritty feeling in the paint. And then when it was waxed over, it just stayed with the piece. So I scuff sanded it to get that down. And then with my white lightning cleaner, I cleaned it and my white lightning beads up just like the water did but just to clean off that sanding dust so now I'm starting with a clean surface and a smooth surface it still has wax on there you guys you can remove um, cured wax with mineral spirits it takes a lot of elbow grease to remove cured wax I've done it before it's really tough so I'm gonna paint over this um, this fully cured wax. So that's what the front of this has on it. I've scuff sanded the entire front of it and then I have um, cleaned it with my white lightning cleaner. So my colors that I'm going to use are, I got, I brought out a few colors. I like how you just grab colors. Yeah, just no big deal. Whatever's up here. I put them up there so I, they should be the colors that I remember. I um, should mix them up. So my customer's complaint about this color is it's beige. It's very beige, very beige. And her walls are beige. And so this piece is kind of just lost. It's not very interesting at all. Amy says she has a mechanics tool coming pretty soon. Are you gonna break it? And she's it? hoping it'll break with her yeah. husband. It's gonna break in shipping. You're hoping it'll break in shipping? Um, it's the only way to go, you guys. Between my mechanics stool and my um, wheel dollies for my pieces like I don't ever need to get up off the floor it's a good deal so the pieces I am going to use on this are this is in the navy I've got antebellum blue I've got um, sandbar and drop cloth and the one I'm missing is midnight sky and this needs to be stirred Shaking, not stirred. Let me grab my midnight sky. Hang on, guys. I need Jeopardy theme music. Okay. Sean is great at trivia, by the way, you guys. He has a bunch of random knowledge stacked in his head that's useful for. Well, um, with the size of my noggin. Yeah, yeah, thanks. All right. I can't use it at work, I can't use it here. Okay, so I just opened that new container, and this is a new container as well. I use Midnight Sky a lot for shading, you guys. It's a soft black, but it will lean towards the blue since I'm putting it up into blues. And I'm going to use my colors since I'm not adding any interest to the front of this. I'm not adding molds. I'm not adding a transfer, um, a stencil, anything like that. I'm going to use color to bring out the shape of this piece. So my twin brother Jason has a question. Is sandbar the same as birchwood? Similar? They are so close. It's a shade off. It's a tiny shade off. But absolutely. Um, if you're if you have birchwood, the closest color to it in the regular color line is sandbar. So feel free to substitute that if you need to. So I'm gonna start out and I'm gonna um I want my legs to be midnight sky. They're gonna fade up into the antebellum. I really want to take down some of this beige. I want it to be a little beige. It's really got some long legs. 
Yeah, she's leggy, isn't she? Um, so I want to I, I want to retain a little bit of the beige, but not where it's so dominant. It really has nothing to do with what I want. It has everything to do with what my customer wants. Okay, so right away I can tell you guys that my paint is covering <laughs> great even over the wax finish. It's, the paint doesn't beat up. The water beat it up, but my paint adheres really well. I'm going to come over to this other side. Who knew? Right. Jason didn't realize he had a twin. Oh. Huh. Parents have been lying to him all these years. No big deal. Looks, a twin that looks nothing like him? Yeah. Fraternal, Jason. It's, yeah. Fraternal. In Don't spirit. Worry. Twins with different parents. <laughs> It happens, right? Okay. I also want my paint on this to be super smooth because knowing that my customer hated that gritty texture that was on this from the chalk paint that was put on here before, I have no idea what brand. She doesn't know what brand. It doesn't really matter what brand. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. So normally I will start off with one color and I try to kind of work it in smaller sections. So I'm going to kind of focus on this middle section with you guys tonight. Oh, I got big questions. Yeah. How was your sleep study? Oh, okay. I first of all owe you guys a huge thank you for everyone who told me that they put goo in my hair because I would have washed my hair and taken a shower before I went to my sleep study. But you guys told me this story that they were going to put goo in my hair. They put goo in my hair, so I'm really glad you guys told me that. Thank you. Um, other than that, it was the single worst experience <laughs> of my life. So there's that. And I'm dipping into the wrong paint color. Yes. <laughs> so there's that. This should be Midnight Sky. So I apparently that sleep study didn't work out so well. No, it really didn't. I was there for 10 hours. I slept for two hours. Then, <laughs> then... If you guys have never done the sleep study, number one, don't... I feel like I have. Yeah. Um, then you finally fall asleep, and then they wake you up. At 6 a.m., they woke us up, and they kick you out of the place. So you're super tired. You've had no sleep, and you get to drive. It's a super good idea. It just was awful. I didn't sleep at all. I so let's home. see, you were there for 10 hours. They got what they wanted, and then they kicked you out. Yeah. I did the walk of shame. Yep. There we go. Left the sleep study place. And they were like, you can stay and join us and have coffee in the lobby. And, and I was like, nope, I'm so out of here. You don't even understand. So hopefully I never have to do that again. <laughs> she listens. You slept with other people? <laughs> yeah. Is that not okay? Um, Sean and I have an arrangement. Oh, wait. Sorry. Yeah. So now I'm using In the Navy, and it's ever, ever, ever so slightly different than my Midnight Sky. But when these paint colors dry, that subtle shade difference. Oh, Melissa says her mom's going in for a sleep study tomorrow night. Oh, okay. Don't let her watch oh, this. Yeah. Tell her that it's glorious. She's uh -huh. going to get the best night's sleep of her life. It's like going to a retreat. To oh, Trisha, away. she did the one at home, and they didn't like those results, so they pulled her in. Or maybe I called them and said, hey, can you give me an extra well, night? Can you just I get her in there? I didn't sleep on the one at home either. So they thought, oh, if we bring her in, she'll sleep better, right? Nope. That's just a normal thing, guys. That's why I'm not Because they think everybody study. can sleep like me and just close your eyes and out. Yeah, Sean, I, we watch TV at night before we go to sleep. I know that's like a big no-no too. And I have to look at him half the time to figure out if he's still awake. Oh, man. You have to look at me? Yeah. Poor thing. <laughs> so, like, there have been times the? when I'll. Oh, isn't that pretty? You guys see that the midnight the contrast, sky? Contrast. Yeah. Midnight sky in the navy and that antebellum blue. So pretty. So yes, there have been times where you think I'm sleeping, you where turn I the TV I'm off, and I'm like, "What the hey?" He's fallen asleep to with the TV on, and I turn the TV off, and he's like, "Hey, I was watching that. Sorry." That is so pretty. So I have a brush for each color going. 
Um, this is kind of, even though I've got a base coat on here, this is kind of my conceptual coat. So I'm really just going to figure out where do I want these colors placed? Where do I want them to meet up? Um, and then I'll do my second coat, which is where I will perfect any blending that I'm doing right now. So I know she wants to retain a little bit of the babyness, so I don't yeah. want to totally make this blue. Although June says she takes to... horse tranquilizers to sleep at night. <laughs> Who does? June. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> good for you, June. All the good meds come from your veterinarian. Just ask Jin. What they don't know won't hurt them, right? <laughs> yeah, just ask Jin. Yeah. Kiwi, they've got a big old dog, or you are using these inappropriately. <laughs> I need another brush. This one, I didn't clean very well. Oh, no, it'll work. Okay, I had a little bit of grunge, but now I loosened it up a little bit. We're good. So as far as the top on this piece, you're not going to paint it, right? No, it's going to be stripped. So the top looks terrible right now, guys, and that's because I was in the middle of stripping it when I um, needed to go live and paint it with you guys. But it's okay because I got the chemical part done to where now I can just come back and do it with a sander. So I have a question for you. Really, it's my own because nobody's really posted yeah, this. But, but when you're stripping the top, do you play special music? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, my jam lately has been... Uh, and I'm so happy tonight. Hang on, let me grab a screwdriver. You need to open these drawers. So what's your jam lately? Um, my jam lately has been um, Elton John or like 80s rock. Uh, more 90s. Let's say 90s. Okay, before I can blend the paint, I have to get it onto the piece. So this is me putting the color onto my piece. That was the um, sandbar. And then I can come back here with my antebellum blue. And I'm gonna start working these into each other. Bam, bam. Again, this is just kind of my conceptual code. Well, Leah says she just saw Elton John in concert. Oh, did you? We saw Elton We've John in concert. We've seen him. Yeah. Well, probably 10 plus years ago. Yeah, it's been a while, huh? Um, yeah, we've seen Elton John. We saw Rod Stewart. I liked Rod Stewart better than Elton John. It was a better show. I don't know. I was kind of disappointed in Elton John. Yeah. Both well, I mean, were. you know, maybe you stepped it up. Open. So now I've come back with my clean dry brush, which is my oval medium, and I'm just working these two colors together. This is the antebellum blue going into the sandbar. Okay, now I feel like my sandbar has gotten a little muddy right along this edge, so I can come back with my brush and just bring that color back to true. I'm using a super soft hand right now, you guys. It's almost a dry brushing technique to blend these colors together. My brush is dry, my paint is setting up a little bit, but um, I'm just using the moisture from the water and minimal paint. If you have too much paint, it can actually start making things a soupy mess. And then I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna come down here and kind of focus on this. Only I think I'm gonna take, you know what, let's do this side here because then I can take this drawer out only because I don't want it to mess up when I'm painting there we underneath go. it. Jennifer says, yeah, Rod Stewart puts on an awesome show. Yeah. Marcy I, says she's seen him three times. I love Rod Stewart. I love his music. Just the show, I just the so entertainment good. factor. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, the entertainment factor. Elton, I don't know. He just He's kinda, good. He just kind of sat there well, obviously. and like played the piano and stuff. That's kind of stupid. Yeah. yeah. Who knew? So if I'm unsure about my colors, I will you know, scoot myself back. If I get paint up onto this edge, it doesn't really matter because don't forget I'm going to be stripping this top completely. I wish uh, it was further along than it is right now. So how do you get it from gooping up? Like the, the paint? The paint? Yeah. If your paint's getting goopy, you have too much paint. It doesn't take very much paint at all, you guys. So um, Dixie Bell gets 
great coverage, number one. It really takes very little paint, but that's probably one of the number one things I see when I teach classes is I see people using way too much paint. Um, if you need moisture, if your paint's getting sticky, use water. And not, I mean, not too much. I don't use tons of water either. But a little bit of water reactivates the paint and then you can work the paints together. It doesn't take a lot of paint. Too much paint. Oh, Debbie said he, he, that she saw Rod Stewart in the 70s. Oh. Ooh, that Do you was remember the, that concert? That was the time to see him, huh? Yeah, you think his energy level's good now? Hmm. Well, we were born in the 70s, so my first concert ever. All right, guys, oh, ready? Man. Question of the night. What's yeah. your guys' first concert you ever went to? Mine was, ready? Wait for it. Pearl Jam. Oh, yeah. Does that tell you the decade I grew up in? Pearl Jam. And I still love him. I, I like Eddie Vedder is a tremendously talented artist, tremendously talented. And while I'm sure he's had a heyday with some substance abuse, he's still alive. So I say go. Um, we saw, we saw um, Aerosmith, Aerosmith in San Diego. That was because I thought for sure that. Um, so sorry to stop you, but Lisa, you say you saw Journey. Did you see with oh. Steve Perry? I'm hoping. Yeah, the Steve Perry Journey is so much better than the new guy Journey. So now I'm Ooh, just Peter Frampton. Stepping those colors together. Go. I'm gonna pull this top drawer out because I'm gonna come work this area, and I don't want to mess up this top drawer. I think it's pretty good, and I'll put it back in in a little bit so we can kind of see um, how it works with the drawer underneath it. While I have this drawer out, though, I'm going to paint around these drawer edges. I'm loving the responses, by the well, way. Well, share it with me. I don't <laughs> well, I did see one for Prince. It just came up. Oh, really? Uh, there's been Chicago, Bad Company, Steppenwolf, Bon Jovi. Oh, Steppenwolf Bon Jovi would be a good Elvis. One. Wow. I want to hear the first concert. Not necessarily the best one. Usually the first one is like... Oh, Gary had to chime in with ACDC. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, Dana, Kansas and Sticks. Okay. See, um, I do want you guys to know that um, Sean still listens to this music on a daily basis. What's that? 70s music. Well, well my new kick has been Pearl Jam because I wasn't into them when they were around. They're still around. I hate to tell you. I mean, you. they don't... Whatever. Going back to that, Eddie Vedder is still alive thing. I'm, one guy. <laughs> All right. But yes, tons of 70s. I'm pretty sure we have a generation gap in between us. What? Yeah. We're close to the same age, but Sean's mom was quite a bit... You know you always listen to the music your parents listen to. Listen to all kinds of music. Which, speaking of, we are now those parents oh, that... Man. Like, our kids are listening to, like, Post Malone and it's like stuff. garbage. I'm like, get this stuff off. We have become those parents. Kiss, Pat Benatar. Oh, Pat Benatar would be good. Three Dog Night, man. Do you even know who Three Dog Knight is? Um, Probably not. Okay, me, carry on. Give me a song. Scorpions. Name. I can't. Somebody give me a song name. I'm throwing it. Um, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. That was a good friend of mine. I don't know the name of that song. No, no, I got nothing. All right, I think I'm going to make this be my midnight blue, and I'll work it up into, or this is in the navy. This is in the navy. And I'll work it up into. Oh, oops. man. ABBA. Oh. Huh? See, that's what I'm talking We're throwing about. Throwing down some yeah. ABBA and Bee Gees, huh? Uh -huh. The Bee Gees, I don't understand the Bee Gees. All their songs kind of sound the same. I know, I know. I'm going to, like, oh, I man. just stepped into a heaping load of trouble there, didn't I? I know they're popular. I don't understand it. I'm working with In the Navy right now, and I'm gonna start working it into some antebellum blue, and then that will 
go into my Oh, CCR. Okay, see? Bob Marley. Wow. Led Zeppelin. Love the Bee Gees. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. That's a... Oh, that's right. That's another one. Joy to the world. But you don't know, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about over there. Do you guys want me to leave? Yeah. You can give us some alone yeah. time. Okay, so this is the, my brush for my antebellum blue. Um, I've also been asked, do I blend inside the drawer? Yes, I will blend inside the drawer because I always want my drawer insides to match my outsides. So I will come back and do that, but I do blend around my drawer frame if, if it's a blended edge. If it's solid, like up here is solid, I just painted the solid color. All right. <laughs> Nancy's screwing it all up. She wants to get back to the painting. So oh, you're painting sorry, over sorry. a wax surface? Yes. So this piece had a wax finish on it. And the day I showed you guys how I prepared it to take paint. Um, it's taking the paint beautifully. Now, one thing I'll say about wax is it does not take boss. So if I wanted to boss this piece, and I may go ahead and boss it. I'm going to see how it takes this coat of paint. Um, if I wanted to boss this, put a coat of paint on first and then put boss. The boss beads up really, really heavily when it's put over a waxed finish. Um, I may boss this only because I'm not sure what sort of prep was done to it before. And I can tell this is a dark wood finish under here just by the style of the piece. Sorry, I'm just blown away by the non-painting stuff like Brenda saying, Charlie Pride. Do you even know who Charlie Pride is? No oh my gosh. You want a divorce? This is not working out for me. <laughs> I'm telling you. Sorry. Sorry. You're right. There is a generation gap. Okay. I'm just kind of working these colors together. I don't want to over focus because like I said, I'm going to have to come back and do another coat anyways. So let's come back down here and work on this drawer. Still going in with my sandbar. <laughs> so now called music by me, basically. Yeah. I'm going to create the decades. Yeah, Sean, uh, one of his random talents is he can name that tune of any song in like two Ooh, notes. Janis Joplin. Uh -huh. Little Bobby McGee. Here's a trick question for you. Do you know who wrote that song? You probably don't even know the song. Are you talking to me? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm totally if anybody out there, totally unrelated to paint. Knows who wrote that song. I've Throw it out God. there. You are dead to me. Me and Bobby McGee. Totally. So let's get to paint. Yeah. Um, so the colors I have on here, this is sandbar that I'm working into in the Navy right now. And I'm trying to kind of clean this line up. I'm not sure if I want to put, let me put this top drawer back in. And then you guys will be able to see. I took the top drawer out just so I could work this area right here without messing up the top drawer. So see here, my paint yeah. was a little bit sticky. I didn't add more paint. Thanks, nice, Diana. Carry on. I didn't add more paint. I added a little bit of water because that's that point where I said that more paint can actually make things harder on you. So let's see how it looks with this top drawer right now. Let's see if I like it. I like this top drawer. Yeah, I think that looks kind of good. So, I don't know. Something needs to change here. Maybe this needs to be antebellum blue instead of the in the navy. So, you know what? It's that simple. Nothing left to lose. Yep. Sorry. Just. Are you guys done over there? Hey. I'm just vibing. It's all right. Okay, you probably have tuned out my entire audience. Are you here? We come here for painting. Sean apparently needs his own show. All right. I think I brought the in the navy up too, a little too high there. I don't know. I'm not feeling this area right here. So what are your colors again? So I have Midnight Sky in the Navy, Antebellum Blue, and Sandbar.
Okay, I'm going to leave this alone and I'm going to work on the sides so I can kind of get a feel for it. I can't tell what color I think should go down here. Not there yet. So I'm going to work on the sides and see how it goes. And your brushes. Um, I have Those a brush some for each color, a mini for each color, and then I have my oval medium out which I'll pull up every once in a while, and I'm just using it to kind of work my colors in together. Sorry guys, I geek out on music. So this is in the navy. And to answer the question, no, this piece isn't for sale. This is a customer's piece. This is a customer's piece that she brought to me that had an existing finish on it. Although I always have a stash of pieces, you guys, and I have a very similar piece to this for sale right now. Come over here and do this leg. So this is in the navy. I want the very bottom of the legs to be the midnight sky, which is my darkest color. So they get ever so slightly darker. But I'm just gonna put this on. And I'm not gonna work on the sides with you guys tonight. Um, number one, because I just cleaned that side over there, I need to get rid of the sanding dust um, and clean it a little bit better. You just have water in that bottle, right? Uh, this one here, that's my white lightning. But this one, yes, that I'm using is just water. The wheel dollies also make it really easy to get down to the bottom of legs without painting all over my floor. How's that working for you? I never get paint on my floor. <laughs> ever. Let's take a look. <laughs> Traitor. So this brush I need to take out of the running. So sometimes when I'm using a brush, this one's got... Sheila, more towels. What's under the towels in the back? More towels. <laughs> no, it's that purple vanity, Sheila. It's a purple vanity and um, um, that ocean piece because the, that's shipping out and then the purple vanity it, it hasn't been picked up yet. So you've already seen all that stuff. It's nothing new. The new stuff is over there. You can pan over to that one. How do they see. find the pieces that you have for sale? Um, if you go to my Facebook page, I have a shop on there. Um, Instagram used to have a shop, but they don't. And I'm trying to figure that out. Um, I have some pieces listed on Etsy and my website at Brushed by Brandy has a for sale page also. So pretty much everywhere I am, except for YouTube, you can find what I have for sale. So this is actually putty that I'm introducing. And I'm feeling like I need a color in between antebellum blue and sandbar. So maybe it's putty. We'll see. I'm going to use that over here and see if I like it better. I think I do already. I went and got myself two more brushes and my putty. Putty paint, it's a paint color called putty. It'd be really tough to say if you were Sylvester the cat. What's that? It'd be really tough to say if you were Sylvester the cat. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Deep thoughts by Sean Collinborn. <laughs> Okay. More of surface thoughts. So let me show you the comparison. All right. Throw me some colors. Okay. So this one up here, I took the antebellum blue directly into sandbar. This one, I took antebellum blue into putty. And now let's put some sandbar in the middle. And see how this works. So this is, again, that coat where I'm conceptualizing. This is kind of where I figure out my color scheme. Do I need a color in between? I'm not sure yet.
Um, it's kind of interesting because the antebellum turns kind of green when it mixes into the putty, and I kind of like it. It's very beachy. All right. really pretty. Can you guys see the difference, that third color in between the antebellum and the sandbar versus just antebellum and sandbar? So this is three colors. This is only two. I think that has more depth than dimension. Feedback? Feedback? Agreed. Yeah? So one thing I'm going to say is I know when I paint, I have a huge advantage because I have the entire Dixie Bell line in my garage all the time, always at my disposal. And it can be hard when you need to order paint colors and you don't have that freedom to play with all the colors. So rely on color combinations that people have tried before your brand ambassadors are here to try different paint combinations and see do they work together do they not work together what could i do to make it better um but i want to acknowledge first and foremost that that is a huge 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 advantage and if you have that privilege of having the entire line all the colors at your disposal then you can just add colors and try a different color when one doesn't work um, otherwise, we are here to give you guys color combinations that do work. So I like, I think, this combination of putty, antebellum blue, putty, and sandbar better than just. <clears throat> so once again, you're going to be stripping the top. Yeah, I'm going to strip the top. So don't look at the top. And I'm getting paint up onto this edge and stuff. I'm not worried about the top at all right now. I've stripped it chemically, and now I need to come back and I need to sand it. It had, this piece had a painted finish on it. A customer brought it to me. She was not happy with the paint job that had been done to it before. And so we're trying to cure some of her um, complaints, which are the texture. Number one, it had a really gritty texture to it. Like it hadn't been sanded in between the coats. I suspect there was some alligatoring in her existing finish too. And I'm going to resolve all that. So this is sandbar that I'm playing with, but I'm working it into some of my putty up here. And this is a wood piece. It's not, the question was asked if it's a metal piece. It's Oh, no. Um, it has, you can see some places where I've scuffed sanded, like here, it's got wood underneath it. It would be a cool looking metal piece though. So then I can make decisions like, okay, I need to bring, she liked the antebellum blue the best. That was her, if she was gonna do a whole color on this piece, it would be antebellum blue. So I, I talk to my customers a lot and I get a real taste for, um, you know, color schemes they like, the room that it's in. What did she like about this piece? What did she not like about it? So you mentioned alligatoring. What exactly is that in the finish? In a clear coat, very old clear coats will start crackling and you call it alligator skin, but it's really just that texture um, that, that it gets in the, in the crackle in the old clear coat. So it's the old clear coat had just gotten so old that it just starts degrading. And I call it an alligator texture because it looks like old alligator skin. It's just a very dry, crackly looking texture. I'm feeling indecisive tonight. That's not helping. When I get like this, I probably need to step away from the piece and have a clean look at it. Kind of like that. It looks kind of like an oil slick almost, like these colors together. I'm going to work them out a little bit better. This is my clean, dry brush. And I'm just, um, this is in the navy antebellum blue and putty that I'm working together. 
but I like I like the way that the putty looks. Lydia says she's going to make a brandy piece someday. She just uh, loves her. I don't even know if I can make a brandy piece some days. <laughs> like, I'm figuring this one out as I go. Figuring it out as I go. So, sanding between coats. Yes. Just take your Dixieville sanding sponge, which is these here. They're 220 grit, although mine are, most of them are worn down probably where they're closer to a 400 grit. And it will just take down that little bit of grit that's in your paint. I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the final product. Like, I would probably be willing to guess that the reason this paint feels so gritty is just that it wasn't sanded in between coats. That and combined with it having an alligator texture, and I think that is why enough that this woman is unhappy enough with the texture in the finish to bring it back and have it redone. Which I told her if that was ever one of my pieces, I would want to know. I would want I would want my customer to come back to me and say, "Hey, I'm really unhappy with this. What can we do? Here's why." Gary said he's going to have his first tricolor piece uh, oh. completed by 2025. Oh, good to have goals, Gary. It's good to have goals. Now, don't rush there, okay, if you need more time. Um, you guys, Gary is one of our Dixieville Paint retailers. If any of you guys are retailers watching, like, you're more than welcome to throw up your um, links to your stores. You guys can go to DixievillePaint.com, and you can find a retailer near you. Um, and they carry the paint in stock. You can go in if you want to see different color combinations together in person. That can be really helpful. Now, there's no rules when it comes to blending. It's just whatever you, whatever, whatever tickles your fancy. Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of the whatever works method. I use it a lot. Absolutely not. There are, so for example, CC Restyled. CC Restyled is another Dixieville Paint Brand Ambassador. She does a lot of blending with a natural bristle brush. That's what she prefers. I don't prefer a natural bristle brush. Now, I'm not going to tell you one bit that you cannot blend with a natural bristle brush. She does it every day, all the time. She has, Her pieces are gorgeous, but we have totally different methods. So maybe there's one thing that I do that clicks for you. Maybe there's something that she does that clicks for you, but there is no right or wrong method. Um, Blending is just putting paint colors together. How do you put them together that works best for you? Maybe you've got a totally other way than any of us do it. I am only teaching you one way, my way, which is generally the right way if you ask Sean. <laughs> well, what? Yeah, generally. Oh, well, compared to mine, yes. But... By no means is it the only way. And if you've got something that you figured out that works for you, good for you. Okay, I feel like, I don't know how I feel. I feel like I need to get dinner. All right, let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna push it back away from me. Okay, I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty. I like the addition of the putty. That made a big difference for me. Can you guys compare it to the middle section where I didn't use that extra color? And I like what's going on over here. So as a concept, I would go for this and try to repeat it now throughout my piece. <laughs> Gary said, guaranteed his piece will never rot with as much many coats as you can have on. Yeah, no, it's very weather protected yeah. for sure. So let's try another look over here. How am I on time? I've been on forever, but yes, you know what? Nobody comes on after me. So you know what? Let's try one more thing over here and then I'll let you guys get off. I know I've been on for a while, but I'm, I'm in the zone. Remember I told you if you're in the zone, you don't leave the zone. I'm figuring this out and I'm gonna take 
my neutrals up a little and expand them a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so for this side, I'm going to take and expand on the lighter colors a little bit and see how I feel about that. And then I'll kind of have like three different looks all on one piece. But these are all just my base coat. So no matter what, I can still come back and paint over them with my second coat. I know this needs a second coat no matter what. So what are you going to do with the hardware? Ideas? Um, my hardware is actually really pretty and it's got a really pretty patina on it. So I actually think I'm going to leave it natural. Um, it's... I think we have more votes for the middle and staying away from the putty. No way. Really? You guys are blowing my mind right now. Huh. See, that's one of those things where I'm probably going to have to step away from it and come back with a clean eye. And see which one I like. really interesting you guys are surprising me tonight so do you usually paint the piece before you sand the top what they don't no, see is it's it's already it's been, been stripped. stripped it already has been stripped with chemical stripper you guys so no i prefer to um strip chemically strip first and paint after because as i tell sean i will 100 percent for sure drip stripper onto my clean fresh paint. So I chemically stripped it. I need to come back and I need to sand the rest, but I wanted to get that chemical part done at least. Um, and the only reason is because I needed to come on and paint with you guys tonight. Otherwise I would have finished that part completely. And what's that color that you're putting on now? This is antebellum blue. It's gorgeous. This is like a must have color for sure. I really like it. It turns into a really pretty teal color with uh, putty. So mix it with putty for sure. That's a good, a good custom color mix. I can't believe you guys don't like it. Uh, you're probably about 50, 50. Okay. Thank you. Just the ones talking about the three colors don't know what they're talking about. No big deal. Yeah. Not that I favor yeah. one. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. <laughs> it's fine. I'll go block all those people afterwards. <laughs> I already no did it. Worries. It's cool. So when you reference chemical stripping, there's a question out there. What is chemical stripping? So you're... You want to show them my Jasco right there? So we talked about it in the beginning that I use um, the harsh chemical strippers from the hardware store, Jasco. We talked about a reformulation that's going just happened. Um, but chemical stripping mean I will do the chemical part and then I can come back after that and sand. And the reason is, is because some of these pieces that we work on are veneers and veneers can be thin. And once you sand through a veneer, there's no going back. So I try to sand minimally and strip with chemical strippers instead, as much as possible. Mm. So totally conceptualizing the idea here clean this up just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want to be able to show you guys the three different looks. Doesn't have to be perfect because this is just my big scope. And then I'm going to 
to add a little bit of ingredients. So as far as the stripper is concerned, this, have you tapped into this Jasco? Truly tapped into this one or? The new kind? Yes. The new one? No, I have not. Okay. I have not used the non-methylene chloride formula yet. Because I cleared the shelves of the good stuff before they outlawed it. We paid a moment of silence to my stripper because now I have to start using the weaker stuff. All right, so. So the two colors you used in the middle. Which one? Or two colors, three colors. So you've got coming from the bottom of the legs. Coming from the bottom, this is Midnight Sky in the Navy. In the Navy comes up here. In the Navy blending into Sandbar. Antebellum Blue into Sandbar. So I've got four colors in just this center section. And on the two sides, I've done a different color scheme. And I added putty in. And then one side has the blue going up higher and one side has it starting down lower. I think if I cleaned up this, this is probably where I should be over here. I don't like the center at all. You're really bothering me right now. Yeah. What else is new? Me and about 20 of your closest friends. Oh, <laughs> With what? Not liking the middle. Not, oh, I don't like the middle. The middle's out for me. I'd prefer if you just stop talking then. You like really, it? You're really bothering me. You like it better? Mm-hmm. Really? Wow, am I off my rocker tonight, guys? Come on, throw me a bone. I'm, I'm over here. I'm over here. Literally. Yeah, I'm over here. I like this side. And guess what? It's my piece. You I win. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to come back and read the comments because I'm curious. Obviously, it needs a lot of perfecting. I clean this up a little bit. But as a rough concept, you guys can kind of see how the three are different using the same colors. Should I just leave it like this with all three sections different? Yeah, that's well. <laughs> so, anyways, you guys. That's right. Leah's on Team Sean, by the way. What? In the yeah. middle? Leah. I don't like your attitude right now. It's really Come on. Me. Come on. You guys are my people. <laughs> no, I'm going to step away from it. But step I'm gonna, away from the But plate. now I've got three basic concepts that I can really look at and decide which look I want to continue in my next coat. And my next coat is my final coat. So. Maybe I'll send it to my customer and let her decide too. I guess she could have a say. Well, that's crazy. Since <laughs> it has to be in her house. So um, the colors, again, I'm going to go over all the colors I used tonight. Our Dixie Belle Sandbar. Putty. Oh, look, they're all over the floor. Antebellum Blue. In the Navy. And Midnight Sky. Total of five colors used in three different ways for three different looks. And I have a total of one, two, let's count my brushes. And two of these. So I get to go clean seven brushes right now. That's how I. Let's it. not judge Gary. Yeah. Says I got into June's fireball. <laughs> All right, you guys, I've been on way too long. I'm going to let you guys go, but this was fun. Thank you guys for letting me just think and be and paint because this is how it usually comes out. It usually comes out not really knowing where it's going and I make decisions as I go. But um, I have new pieces to post for you guys tomorrow. Go follow my page at Brush by Brandy if you want to see them. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next Thursday. Thank you.